My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. This episode I'll cover the fuel tank for my car. This was constructed from laser cut aluminium plate and like quite a few other Formula V's out there was located sort of behind and below the driver's back, essentially forming the back of the seat. This has the advantage that it's right where the car's centre of gravity is, meaning the car's balance won't shift as it goes through its fuel load. First, looking at the problem of storing a large volume of liquid on board a racing car. As you might expect, the loads that the car is subjected to have the tendency to throw the fuel around within the tank. If left uncontrolled, this sloshing can cause problems such as stressing the walls of the tank, causing fuel surges and unbalancing the car. There are several solutions to this. The best seem to be specialist foams which reduce the sloshing and contain the fuel in the event uh, that the tank gets penetrated in an accident. This is required in some higher racing categories, however this is not the case in Formula V. For me, a more traditional baffled solution suited me quite well as the baffles would also provide the internal bracing to the fuel tank, which would allow it to be used as the driver's backrest. The baffles work by restricting the flow of fuel around the tank. As the car is loaded long ways or sideways, the fuel tries to move in that direction, however, it can only pass through the small holes in the base of the baffle walls. It will eventually equalise in the furthest compartment, but it won't slosh around nearly as much as it would otherwise. I also designed the baffling arrangement to try and direct the fuel towards the small reservoir at the back. The reservoir is a small additional volume at the base of the tank. Fuel flows down into the reservoir through a hole in its centre, which should prevent it from starving the engine of fuel when the tank is nearly empty. The fuel pickup extends into the reservoir where it should have a small buffer even if the fuel moves away from the pickup point. Building the fuel tank started with the baffles. Welding aluminium requires all the surfaces to be completely clear of any oxide layer. The aluminium has a very thin oxide layer on it which prevents it from corroding like steel. This layer melts at a far higher temperature than the base metal so if you have not removed it then the weld won't go very well. I used a sanding disc on the grinder to do this and cleaned the surface using acetone. These were stitch welded together to form the internal baffle array. Next I attached the baffles to the base plate. I had to be quite exact with their location so that the sides front and rear would slip into position accurately later on. There are three nozzles on the fuel tank, the filler, the fuel offtake and the breather. These were all drilled into the tank with the filler nozzle cut using a hole saw. The nozzles were prefabricated off the main tank, then welded into place. The rear panel went on very last after all of the internals had been thoroughly cleaned of any foreign material. Once the tank was welded together, we did a leak test to make sure that it was completely sealed. We used a small air compressor to slightly pressurise the tank. We had to be careful not to overpressurise it. While it would be strong under a vacuum due to the baffles, it would be weak to internal pressure. Even with the smallest pressure, the panels would bow visibly. With some pressure inside the tank, I rubbed warm soapy water over all of the welds to check for leaks. We did find a few minuscule leaks in areas with no visible defects to the weld, which did surprise me. They were in areas like bolt mounts, which were more irregular and difficult to weld. I ground these down and welded them back up to fix the problems. We did another test afterwards where we put some pressure in the tank with a pressure gauge on it to observe how quickly the pressure went down. This completed the fuel tank, but there were a couple of things that had to happen on the car to integrate it. I had to add a nozzle onto the side of the car for the fuel tank breather. The rules require the tank to be vented to a location outside of the bodywork of the car. The nozzle was installed onto the lower side impact protection plate. A hose would connect the tank to this nozzle. In the event that the tank were overfilled, it would discharge outside the car here. This also allows air to enter and exit the tank as it is used up or filled. Finally, the mounting points for the chassis were added. To get them as accurate as possible, I bolted them to the fuel tank and tacked them in place that way, then removed the tank and finished off the wells.
That about covers it for the fuel tank. I had some reservations going into it since it would be my first large item that I'd ever welded out of aluminium, but in the end I was pretty happy with the result. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I've been getting a lot of positive feedback recently, which has been really good to hear. I hope you're enjoying watching the car come together, and I'll see you on the next one.